Judges, it tells us about a woman by the name of Deborah. Yes. And how God called her judge. He called her to be judge and lead Israel at that time. If you want to give your heart a break, ladies and gentlemen, the second thing that you have to do after you ask God to deliver you from people is that you've got to remember who called you. That's right. You've got to remember who called you. See, when you re remember who called you, you're going to automatically be delivered from people. Because you're going to remember, you know what, the, the work that I'm doing, it's not in vain. I'm not doing this work for people, but I'm doing it for the Lord. Right. So I'm going to remember who called me. Turn over, uh, let's turn over to Psalm 34. Psalm 34. The Lord called Deborah. She didn't have to, uh, to kiss up to anybody to get there. She didn't have to sleep with anybody to get there. The Lord called her. Say it again. Say, God calls me. God <laughs> when somebody calls you and tells you something very important or something of significance, that is a conversation, that is a phone call that you will never forget. Perhaps you've gotten a phone call telling you that a loved one has passed. That is a phone call that you will never forget. Perhaps you got a phone call uh, telling you uh, that you were that you got the job that you thought you were unqualified for. That is a call that you will never forget. I actually remember being in 12th grade and there was a program called Peer Leaders. And, uh, and I, I, I had said, I'm either going to run for student coalition president or I'm going to try out to be a peer leader. And at the time they said, look, you can't do both. Uh, so I said, well, if I be peer leader, I can really one-on-one -on -one help a lot of students. So I remember when the letter came in the mail, <laughs> boy, I started running and jumping and just running around the house making noise. It was a call, a letter that I will I never forgot. And that's what we have to do. When we are uh, uh, wanting to give our hearts a break and be delivered from people, we got to remember that God called us, all right? So that is something that you get excited about. So one more time, say, God called me. Wow. Back to the Lord, some things got harder, yeah. right? Some things went ballistic. But look at this, verse 19. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. Woo, baby. Oh, baby. You wonder why I got so many problems? It's because I'm righteous. It's because God called me. But the good news is that although God has anointed me, God has called me, I may have problems, but guess what? He will deliver me out of them all. Did the rapper say, I got 99 problems, but my faith ain't one? I got 99 problems, baby, but my faith is not one. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but God will deliver me out of them all. Let somebody high five. Say, I got 99 problems, but my faith ain't one. Oh, glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. Give your heart a break. And sometimes when those problems come, we automatically say, oh, it must be something that I'm doing. Yes, that's right. It must be something that I'm doing wrong. Must be something that I'm missing. Something I need to open up my eyes to a little more. God, give me the eyes to see what I'm missing. That's right, yes, Lord. But then this perspective will tell you that this is just practice for your purpose. And if God brought you to it, He'll bring you through. Amen. Understand that all things work together for the good yes. of them who love the Lord and are called according to His purpose. Y'all hear the preacher coming out now, right? Yes. Glory to God. Stir it up, God. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but God will deliver them out of them all. Deborah was called a judge. She was anointed. She was anointed. She remembered that God called her, and she began immediately to give some orders. There's a poem that I heard recently about uh, God using you. And it says, it's by an unknown author. And it says, when God wants to drill a man and thrill a man and skill a man, when God wants to mold a man to play the noblest part, when he yearns with all his heart to create so great and bold a man, that all the world shall be amazed, watch his methods and watch his ways, how ruthlessly perfects whom he royally elects, 
how he hammers him and hurts him, and mighty blows converts him into trial shapes of clay, which only God understands. While his tortured heart is crying and he lifts beseeching hands, how he bends over and never breaks when his good he undertakes, how he uses whom he chooses, and with every purpose, Uses him, but by every act induces him to try his splendor out. God knows what God is about. And God's plan, and how he still has a plan. Author Frances Seymour, she wrote uh, the following. She says, When my mind is filled with anxiety and doubt, God has a plan. Yes. When evil surrounds me and I'm feeling trapped, God has a plan. Yes, yes, yes. When I think of uncertainties that may lie ahead, God has a plan. When I ponder circumstances that may fill my heart with dread, God has a plan. When I think of times I desperately feel alone, God has a plan. When I think of loved ones already gone, God has a plan. When I think of the depth of truth that I must share, God has a plan. And when I accept his ongoing love, mercy, and care, I know God has a plan. Yes, Ladies yes. and gentlemen, although afflictions may be many, although loneliness may come sometimes, we understand that God has a plan, and no matter what the situation may be, He can deliver us from them all. So stop your worrying, stop your crying with your end, and give your heart a break. Give your heart a break. Say, Lord, is it I?